Hi, my name is Kelly Clancy. I'm a researcher at the Hopkins Centre. Um, my research relates to physical activity promotion for individuals with complex and chronic conditions, primarily disability. Um, the focus of this research is translating evidence-based programs, so programs that have been demonstrated to be effective in research, into clinical practice in a way that's sustainable. I think design and innovation is important in rehabilitation at the moment because it allows us to push the frontiers and push the boundaries of where we've been in the past. But I think one of the most important messages that came through today was the idea of moderating that and thinking about the social implications for what we're doing and not just innovating for innovating's sake but having a purpose and a social construct behind it. The one take-home message for me from today's symposium is really the idea of multiple stakeholder engagement in innovation and design. Um, we have these great ideas and we have these great innovations but really we need the consumers and the knowledge users to be involved in the knowledge creation. So we need them to be able to be on the forefront of these ideas and in the innovation and design elements of those ideas to make them sustainable. My name is Libby Calloway, I am an occupational therapist, I work at Monash University in Melbourne and our team's research focuses on housing technology and support design, particularly for people who have acquired a disability, a neurological disability, and looking at how we can just best design space to, for the um, needs and goals of a person living in the community. I think Australia is in a really exciting time with major policy reform underway with the introduction of a national disability insurance scheme. So there's real opportunity for people with disability to look to the market and make choices and decisions about the purchases that they want to make to enact their goals. It also becomes a challenge. Um, there, are, there are innovative um, approaches emerging, but a need to really look at um, the wants of a person who's living with an acquired disability and listening to them about what their design needs are. Oh, it's been fantastic to be at the Hopkins Centre um, Bold Ideas, Better Solutions um, Symposium today. I think the real message that's come through from all of your researchers and the others presenting today has been the importance of really collaborative co-design, interdisciplinary work where you uh, have the person that has the lived experience and team other team members working with them to really map out what's necessary and what's going to have best impact on outcomes long term. I'm Claudio Pizzolato. I work within the Menzies Health Institute Queensland and specifically in G Corps. I'm here today at the Bold Idea Better Solutions Symposium to talk about the Biospine project, which involves combining and integrating solutions and technologies that have been shown to be effective in restore movements in people with spinal cord injury. And we are what we're doing is putting these technologies together in a better way, and we're doing it here in, uh, in Australia. As part of the Biospine project, we are uh, involving consumers, patients, clinicians, engineers and researchers because we want to co-develop this, uh, this technology so that down the line we can actually translate it. We don't want Biospine to be just something that stays in a corridor, we want it to be translated in clinical practice. From today's Bold Ideas Symposium, uh, I think the main message is that we need to work together with uh, patients and clinicians as well as other um, health professionals to enable uh, new technologies to be translated in clinical practice. Okay, I'm Dr. Leslie Gunn. I'm a rehabilitation physician at Logan Hospital and that's where I conduct my research in collaboration with the Hopkins Centre. Well, it's so important because we've got all this technology available to us and we would be silly not to take advantage of it um, to help people who need the help and support. Where might the sport happen? I really think it should happen everywhere, um, from community all the way through into hospitals. Um, everyone has to be on the same path and idea and be consistent. Um, my highlight was essentially um, the message that we should be listening very carefully to the person who is going to be the user of the new ideas and technology um, because they are going to be the ones using it and it will be very wrong of us to assume that we know best um, just because we are supposedly able-bodied. All of us have some kind of disability or difference um, so I think it's important that we all listen to each other and, and um, build our technology that way. Sure, uh, my name is Ali Lakani and I do my research at the Hopkins Centre at Griffith University. 
I think um, focusing on discovery and design and rehabilitation is particularly important now um, due to the demographics in Australia. So we have an aging population and arguably there's going to be a lot more um, burden on our rehabilitation systems. So we do need to be uh, across most innovative methods to support people who are entering rehabilitation. Uh, from today's symposium, the largest, I guess the highlight for me was learning about how a lot of consumer technologies are being used in rehabilitation and the evidence base to support their use is growing. This symposium was a, a great opportunity to learn about many of them. My name's Kylie Pursehouse. I'm a social worker. Uh, I manage the spinal outreach team based here at PA. And where do I do my practice? I do my practice all over Queensland. I think it's really important now because there's so much happening in technology and design um, and as a social worker I think what's really important and what the Hopkins Centre brings is to keep um, empathy, to keep humanness, to keep those interactions into the whatever we're doing in design. My highlight for today was the panel discussion. I really enjoyed hearing the perspectives from um, uh, Angel and I think you know she brought it back to what really is inclusive, what's universal, not losing sight of what's important in terms of people's experiences. And I think those experiences, when we're looking at design, is the message I took away from that. It's not about the thing, it's about the experience that that can enable. Uh, I'm David Crompton. I'm, I work within Metro South Addiction and Mental Health, but my main role sit within the Institute for Suicide Research and Prevention at Griffith and also within Neuroimaging at TRI. I think it's an important topic for multiple reasons. Firstly, we've got a lot of people who have varying de levels of disability and what we need to be able to do is maximise the capability of people within the bounds of what they would like to be able to do into the future so that they can live their life to the maximum extent. My highlight for today was the keynote address and it was an interesting address in the sense that what it focused on was that issue of co-design of what was important for the individual who was, had been affected and what their needs were rather than what necessarily what we perceived our needs are. Uh, better design is important right now because we have an obligation to help fellow, fellow Queenslanders and their families who have been tragically injured, injured in car accidents uh, and we just need to be putting them first, putting them in the moment and trying to design systems that really work for a user, not for all the other stakeholders. My highlight from today was learning from people now working in research in this sector who have disabilities themselves and learning that technology solutions for one don't work for everyone. Discovery and design in rehabilitation is really important now because in my particular area of people with communication impairment, it's they're a very socially isolated and vulnerable cohort um, and so we aren't getting it right and um, they are isolated and we need to change the way that we um, care for those people in their context in the community and, and through communication partner training that's really important and validated. I must say I particularly like the final um, the presentation from the RACQ. Um, I think it resonated because it was someone with a lived experience and someone who's in a non sort of traditionally disability or health sector and to hear his words were just really inspiring to me. So I'm David Borg and I'm a currently a research fellow within the Hopkins Centre based here at the PA Hospital. So I think design and discovery is very important because there's so much scope to draw many disciplines together and answer uh, I guess the large number of complex issues uh, related to rehabilitation and rehabilitative practices. So my highlight from today is uh, from rather than a singular presentation I guess the questioning of uh, introducing uh, technology into rehab so while it's very exciting I still think we need to be very mindful around does everyone have access to it and are we able to provide that type of technology to all individuals rather than selective uh, cases? I'm Alison McDonald and I am an ambassador for the Hopkins Centre. Uh, for me the highlight um, was seeing how the Beehive, the Brain Enrichment Environment Unit has progressed from those early conversations to now be here talking about what we're going to start doing. That was really exciting. So the Beehive, Beehive Lab, from my perspective coming at it as an architect, we're looking at brain enrichment environments and I'm specifically looking at um, cognitive enriching environments and that 
closing the gap between health research, neuroscience, neuropsychology research and architecture so that we can have much better buildings. Hi, I'm Harry McConnell. I'm Professor of Neuropsychiatry and Neurodisability at Griffith at the School of Medicine there, and I also am the Director of the Institute for the Clinical Advancement of Neuroplasticity, or ICAN, which is a charity looking at neuroplasticity principles to brain injury. The research happening at Hopkins is really, really critical at, at this point because there is, there is so many advances coming into the neurosciences at the moment, uh, but what we don't see is them having practical applications to clinical science, to applications to people in real life situations, and, and I, I guess I see the Hopkins Institute as leading the way in translational research, and that's what we really need in this, in this area. We have, we have neuroscientists on one side, we have clinicians on the other side, and what we really need is people bridging that gap and doing that translational research so we can understand what really works and we can understand all these advances in neuroscience and how we actually apply that to make people's lives better. My name is Louise Gustafsson and I'm a research leader in Hopkins Centre and a professor in occupational therapy at Griffith University. I think discovery and design is really important as a theme now because it's really time that we start throwing things up in the air and not just trying to fix what we have, particularly from a design perspective. We really need to start from the ground up again and listen to what people are telling us about what they need and turn these systems and services around. And part of that is definitely about looking at the design but looking at what new discoveries and innovations we can incorporate to allow us to do that. Oh, my highlight from Hopkins is always the fact that I can sit there and hear something new or listen to someone from Hopkins speak or a clinician speak and think, I've got a connection there and I need to go and talk to you and, you know, so we can grow and build from that. So that's certainly always a highlight for me. But I think the other thing is, and, and Kevin Cox kicked it off beautifully this morning about stories and how stories are the things that make a difference and also they're the things that um, prevent inequality. So I think that has been a highlight for me. I'm Mary Whitehead, I'm the Director of Occupational Therapy here at the Princess Alexandra Hospital in Brisbane. I think that discovery and design is important in rehab now because our um, patients are needing uh, solutions to barriers that they face every day, from washing their hair, brushing their teeth, um, to how do I get in the car to pick up my kids. Um, and these technology solutions will help them to be able to do the things that they want to want and need to do every day. My highlight from today was the launch of Habitech because this is an opportunity for our patients to partner with our uh, industry, industrial designers, engineers and clinicians to come up with the solutions of tomorrow. My name is Marie Elf. I'm Professor in Nursing at Dalarna University in Falun in the middle of Sweden. I think design and rehabilitation is really important today because we have new concepts. For example, person-centered care. Uh, we, use, we need to have shared decisions making between the patients and the staff. And also maybe the relatives should be included in that uh, uh, the decisions. So we need to design new kind of service and also new kind of uh, healthcare buildings. We, knew, we need new buildings because uh, the buildings we have today uh, in the West World, they have been built, they were built uh, during the 60s and 70s and they are old. We can't renovate them anymore. We need to, to build modern, uh, buildings that are um, related or connected to the to the, the, this, the to <laughs> to uh, to the today's uh, requirements and demands of of health care services. Actually, my highlights uh, from today is that there were uh, there were many speakers that talk of the importance of co-design and how to co-design with the, the most important users, the patient, and, and also um, focus on both strength of the method, but also the difficulties, the difficulties to doing real co-design with the users. The new things I've taken home for, to Sweden from today is that 
you're struggling with the same problem as we are. But also that uh, co-designing is so important, both when it's come to service, technology, but also the built environment. I'm Michelle Foster and I'm the Research Director at the Hopkins Centre. Discovery and design and rehabilitation is important right now because the explosion in technology and discovery, I mean, we're just getting cleverer and cleverer. Our scientists and our um, innovators are doing amazing things. At the same time, people with disability are really exercising a lot more control and a lot more decision making. So we really need to bring the spotlight onto design and discovery so that um, everyone makes good decisions and decisions that are, um, are beneficial and are of value to people's lives. My highlight from today was absolutely Professor Jackie Leach Scully. I mean, it's just wonderful to have someone who, who has a science background and then has trained as a bioethicist to bring those two disciplines together to think about the opportunities and benefits that technology and design and discovery has, but with some caution and with some questioning, because I think there are always challenges with, um, you know, uh, the expectations we raise around design and discovery and the hope that that offers but we need to understand what the complications and the challenges are around that and I think she made us think really carefully about that.